To show you the quality of this model, I'm going to trace you through the four strokes using this number one cylinder across here. Now you can tell that this cylinder right now is in between the exhaust and intake stroke. And as we begin to turn, the intake valve begins to open, the exhaust valve closes fully, and we're on intake, which sucks air and fuel into the cylinder. Then we begin compression, the uh, intake valve closes, we squeeze everything, and the spark plug, which isn't on here, but would at this point fire, giving us a power stroke. The power stroke would deliver the power, and then at the bottom of the power stroke, the exhaust valve will open. The exhaust valve opens, and the cylinder continues up, forcing the exhaust out. Now, the amazing thing about the radial engine is all of those things are happening all at the same time. And the pistons begin firing every other piston. One, three, five, seven, two, four, six. One, three, five, seven, two, four, six. To give very even amounts of power. Authentically speaking, this requires some crazy things happening inside the timing section. And so our timing cam, as you can see here, has three lobes, and it spins in the opposite direction of our crankshaft. And it spins at one-sixth the speed of the crankshaft. Um, each of these continues moving, and so this is how it skips the individual uh, cylinders to make everything happen at the right time. So, we can make this happen manually, or in this case I've hooked my drill to it, and you can see everything begin to happen at the same time. Now, I'm not going to recommend that you motorize this and keep it turning, because there aren't any bearings on it. But you can see that it can move pretty quickly.